Hi everyone, this is Chris from Surreal Seeker Workshops. So today our tutorial is going to be largely on the luminance sliders in Lightroom. First thing, this is going to be done in the develop module. And this tutorial is designed to follow one of my earlier tutorials. So the idea is that Lightroom works top down. Therefore, you should have already gone through and done your basic adjustments in the basic panel here. And if you went through and did the slightly more advanced adjustments in your tone curve, great. Because what we're going to do next is come down to this panel. We've got three options you can see. Hue, saturation, lightness, color, and then black and white. But we're going to work on the HSL panel. And as you can see, you have a hue, saturation, and luminance. And luminance is going to be the one that we're going to talk about mostly today. These each correlate to a channel, red, yellow, orange, etc. And what they're going to allow us to do is to increase or decrease the luminance, aka brightness, on those channels. And you might be asking yourself, well, why do I want to do that? Well, that's exactly why we're going to go through and take a peek. So first thing, on an image like this, as you can see in the histogram and the image, uh, it's largely uh, a blue and a green image. Therefore, those are the channels that are going to be affected the most, and we're going to play with those. So for an image like this, I would take it and see that the sky up here, uh, although it's exposed well, not blown out or anything, uh, to increase some more visibility in the textures here and increase the drama of the scene, what we can do is take this blue slider, and I like to use the numbers, and what happens is if we drop this, let's say a 15, we've decreased the, the brightness of the blue channel, and that gives us this effect. This comes in handy if you've already brought down your highlights, brought down the lights in your tone curve, and you still are having problems with the sky being too bright, for example. Bringing down the blue channel often is a great way to recover that sky. So I like what we did there. Again, we dropped it down to negative 15. Just to see the, the difference, we'll bring it back up. And as you can see, it brightens it up. So we're gonna undo that. And now next, again, this image has a lot of green and yellow in it. So what we can do is then increase, that's an increase in the yellow. Let's undo that. This is an increase in the green. Similar. And what's nice about this is, although those two channels are fairly similar in result, what we can do is actually build in some contrast by adjusting those. For example, we saw the yellow, that's brightened up. It only affects a small portion of these. So what we're going to do is undo that. And let's brighten the yellow up to, say, 35. So we've brightened it up a touch. But now instead of automatically going and increasing the green, like we did there, that kind of does the same effect. We don't really build any contrast. So if we undo that, come back to the green, and bring it down by, let's say, 45. So now we have both green and yellow in an area that could have been just one of those colors. So we're going to zoom out. So in three clicks, we've now decreased the sky, increased the yellows, and brought down the greens to create some contrast. So to see the differences, we're going to go back to our history panel and see what we did. We're going to click back to here. And that was before adjusting any of the luminance sliders. And this was after only three clicks. We brought back some drama and some contrast in just three easy clicks. And now let's take a quick peek at another image to show you similar effects. Okay, here we have an image of some aspens from the June Lake area of California shot back in October during the fall workshop. And I chose this image because we've got yellows and oranges and greens. And the proximity of those colors to each other uh, is really important when it comes to the luminance sliders. So as you can see, I've already adjusted these, but what I'm going to do is zero them out. So that's the starting point. Again, you've already done your basic adjustments, and if you felt more advanced, you've done the tone curve. And now we finesse it in the luminance sliders. So an image like this, it's easy to to do, overdo the yellows and oranges, for example. So the first thing I would do with something like this, uh, to gain some more details back in those highlights, is to drop the oranges, since those are pretty predominant. We'll take that down to a 
negative 35. And you can see, I'll zoom in, the effect that that has, once I undo it, redo it, dropping the luminance in this in instance gives some definition to those areas. But now we're going to come back over and adjust the yellow slider. And in the conversation of adding contrast, we're going to add luminance to the yellow. And that brightened everything up a touch, but largely just the yellow. So now we've got some definition between the orange and yellow. And now the next slider would be the green. And the green in this image is subtle. And this is kind of why we use the luminance sliders. So you can see it in here. It's kind of dotted in between the changing of the leaves. So if we decide to, for example, drop that value, let's drop it a little bit further. Now we've created an extra layer of contrast to really separate the green from the yellow and orange. And just to illustrate that a little bit more, that's before the, the green shift, and now with the green shift, just a little bit more punch. Now let's check out one last image for a demonstration. We're going to come down to this image from Godafoss in Northern Iceland. Okay, now let's take a peek at this image and first determine what we would want to accentuate or deaccentuate. The colors in this image are largely in the green, aqua, and blue category. There is a touch of yellow, as you can see in the histogram. And so we're going to use the luminance slider to accentuate just that. So first thing, I know that there's a little bit of yellow in this rock here. And just to make that punch up, especially it's because it's in the foreground, I'm going to raise that value way up to 65. And fairly subtle, but at the same time striking. So I'm going to zoom in to show you that. I apologize for my buzzing monitor as well. Okay, and now we have a close-up, and let's demonstrate what that luminance shift did. That's without. That's what the luminance of the yellow bumped up. So let's zoom back out. And let's evaluate a few more of these color channels. So let's take a look at the blue. In this case, I don't need to drop it like crazy, but if I did, it would do something like this. You might like that effect. Uh, it's a really deep blue in the sky. And honestly, it's actually a pretty good effect. But in this case, uh, I'm going to keep it fairly subtle. So I'm going to undo that, as you can see. I'm just going to make it a negative 5. So it's just a touch, mainly in this area. So we still have this kind of pocket of brightness uh, becoming a bit of a focal point, which is okay. And now that we've got the yellow and blue addressed, let's work with the aqua and green. And a good way to determine how much of each channel is in an image is just to push it all the way to the right. You can see the change. Or push it all the way to the left. So in this case, the green is largely in the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with, after I undo those, we're going to work with the green and aqua to create some contrast. So I'm going to bump up this green by, let's call it 25. And that's a subtle change, watch. Mainly in here, redo that. So I bumped up this area, and now let's go to the aqua. I have a feeling there's a lot of aqua in this image, and just to confirm that, let's push it to the right. Yes, indeed, you can see it, all this just lit up right here. So let's undo that. And we're going to go the opposite way with the aqua. Now let us return back to zero. Let's drop the aqua by 35. Ah, uh, yes, let me zoom in. Let's undo what we just did. As you can see, there's a lot of aqua in the highlights. So when we decrease that, we bring back some highlights. Indeed, let's zoom out. So let's take a peek at what we did in just one, two, three, four sliders. Go back over to our history and click down to our first. That's with nothing done to the luminance sliders. And now this is with our adjustments applied. And as you can see, everything falls off nicely in the back here, more definition, along with more punch in the foreground. So there you are. 
that's how you use the luminance sliders in Lightroom to do things like recover highlights, increase interest, create contrast, and in general, just to make your images that much more dynamic and polished. So thanks for following along. For more tutorials and for full info on infield workshops, please check out surrealseekerworkshops.com. Thanks, till next time.